The Immortal John Hancock here, and today I'm taking a look at a new Chinese clone, the RK2020. These constantly come out of China, and this is the newest version of these clone handhelds. And so I wanted to take a look at this handheld to see how far the emulation has gone and what it can provide. Supposedly, this offers Dreamcast N64 and PSP support, so you can play those games on this. I'm going to take a look at that and focus on those, as well as do a basic overview. Let's take a look. All right, so this is the specs of the RK2020, which is a clone of the Odroid Go Advance. It's a clone of a clone. And so here are some of the specs here. Uh, looks like a decent battery. We'll see USB type C for charging. Uh, display is pretty decent from the specs on the sheet. So here's the packaging. This is what mine came with. I got the purple one sent to me. Uh, it does come with a USB stick where you can take out the micro SD card and plug it into your computer. It does come with an analog stick cover. The analog stick on it is fairly cheap looking. And so uh, box is uh, pretty, pretty standard fare for a Chinese clone, nothing fancy. Here's instructions if you wanna update the firmware as well as add additional ROMs to your handheld. In this video, I'm not doing that. I'm just covering what is included on the unit sent to me already installed. And so it does have these bright lights on the back. And also when you turn it off, there's no way of telling when you charge it. It's really weird. It kind of reminds me of like police lights. <laughs> it's just really kind of strange and it is a little bit distracting. And so want to mention that as well. So here we go. It is worth mentioning that many of the things that this advertises, it's not completely installed on the device when you get it. You have to tinker around with this. And so there are many emulators already on it and a few games, many homebrews, as well as original releases. But you, you do have to set this up a little bit more on a computer. I'm focusing on everything that you can do out of the box. And so there's many things already installed on it as well as additional things. I guess you can run the original Diablo, or at least it says it can. I did not mess around with that for this video. So uh, definitely impressed from what I've seen. Let's see how well it runs. Original arcade version of Ghouls and Ghosts. Sound is okay. Graphics look okay. I am using a Sony AX53 DSLR camera. I don't know if it'll completely transfer, fingers crossed. So what I'm seeing so far, not bad. Definitely a pass. Uh, the sound is okay, a little tinny, but I, I definitely think on the go, it would be perfectly fine. It'd be perfectly fine with this on the go. Willow Arcade game. All right, here's Dreamcast, and this is Sonic Adventure 2. And you know, this is a game I'm not completely familiar with. It's been a while since I played it, but uh, it's running okay, not 100%. It, you know, for me, you know, I'm always gonna prefer to play uh, Sonic on a big screen at a, a home console. But on the go, is this a pass? I think so. I think it's okay. I, I prefer games to run 100%, and so, you know, I, I, I'm going to be kind of critical of this. And so, uh, the fact that it's on here and the fact that it's running, I think for many people it's going to be fine. For some people, they're going to critique it. I don't know uh, how many frames per second it is, but it's running okay. It looks okay. Uh, definitely a pass. And so, for others, it may not be so great. Definitely want to know what you think. How do you think it's running? All right, wanted to show kind of, uh, it's, it's got some fighters installed, Street Fighter 3 being one of them. Uh, the big issue here is there's only four face buttons, and so it would have been nice to have six face but buttons to play fighters such as this. Uh, it's okay. Uh, sound is okay. Um, I don't know if it's running 100%, but uh, it's pretty good. 
I, I definitely, you know, the, the 2D stuff on this handheld run better. Now, this is where we have issues. Mario Kart, Mario Kart had some sound issues. It looks okay. It definitely, of everything that I've seen run, you know, N64 emulation is pretty difficult. You know, on PC, no problem. Handheld, completely different issue. And so, uh, you know, what I'm seeing here, uh, it's going to bother some. You know, sound issues, definitely. I don't think it looks 100%, but it, it, okay. But, you know, for people that are wanting their Mario Kart fix and are willing to sacrifice some frame rate and sound issues, here's Mario 64. Uh, same thing, uh, not 100%. Uh, definitely was a little bit better. This ran a little bit better than Mario Kart. And so there's several different issues with N64 games and emulation. They just haven't got it 100%. And it's hard because this thing's advertising that it runs those things. People are going to expect it to run. And it runs okay. I think game by game you're going to have to check it out. Something like PlayStation had a few, just a few games installed on it. Toy Story, being, Toy Story 2 being one of them. And this is actually a, a, a decent platformer, fairly challenging, but, uh, you know, it wouldn't be a Chinese handheld unless it was, like, you know, ripping off everything, Capcom, Mario, and Disney. So here it is. Uh, here's Toy Story 2 on the PlayStation. Runs, a note, runs okay. Definitely didn't see any major issues. You know, less powerful console so you know emulator of this is just more refined and so it requires less horse and here's playstation portable just a few games were installed and so i i think that this handheld is going to work better with your you know rpgs with less action and so there is a frame rate drop and so if, if you use a, a a frame rate skip option on your emulators it's going to be better it's not terrible, but it does drop, especially in a Dynasty Warriors style game. It, it's going to be noticeable. And so I just, you know, it's one of those things, you know, for, for many people that play in emulators, they, they may be more forgiving. Uh, for people that have played a lot of the original software, you might be more critical of it. And so here it is running okay. I mean, for some people, it's going to annoy them that it drops frames. And so for the for the 2D stuff, no problem, you know. And, and and the issue is is that you may already have a a clone handheld or or a way of playing these games. And so this is yet another device that offers it, and it offers a wide variety of emulators. And so I mean that's that's a positive of it. Um, you know, for the 2D stuff, it, it's running great. I, I didn't notice any major issues whatsoever. The screen is nice in person. I, again, I don't know if this is going to transfer on the camera, but from what I saw in person for 2D stuff, this is the strength of this console. This is Super Nintendo. This is a uh, like a homebrew of Donkey Kong made for the Super Nintendo. If you haven't checked it out, it was included on my handheld. And so it looks like it's running great. And so a nice crisp screen, uh, control-wise, definitely the, the layout uh, control is fine. I did have an issue with the D-pad. I thought the D-pad was a little slick. It would have been nice to have some uh, uh, some grip on the actual D-pad. Uh, the D-pad itself is okay. I just it wasn't my favorite. And so the buttons are pretty nice and big. Uh, you know, with uh, two shoulder buttons a piece. I, I think definitely this handheld works better with old school gaming. Ah. Uh. This thing's a hit and miss, okay? There's things I like about it. Some of the emulation is good. Some of it's not up to standards. Uh, you know, for people that don't mind playing with frame skips, you know, that this is gonna be okay for you. If you stick to the 2D stuff, this is a decent clone handheld. Uh, the build quality is so-so. I really don't like that it doesn't have a volume wheel. Uh, you know, it rat ran a little bit warm after playing it a couple hours. I don't know how long the battery life is. Um, the, you know, the buttons are, are fairly large. The D-pad is so-so. The analog stick is rather cheap, 
with the cover that they give you, it makes it a little bit better. This is not going to be for everybody. And so that's what I think of it. I think it's so-so. I think there's going to be fans of it. If you're interested, the link is below. Thank you for your ongoing support. I like covering these handhelds, and I did my best in this video. If you're interested and like what you see, hit that like button and subscribe button, and click the bell as I upload videos every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. This is the immortal John Hancock. You take care.